Hey, hey, my lovely goal getters. Welcome to the Moms Making Money Show. I'm your host, Amy Peterson, business mentor and confidence coach for the emerging boss mom. It's my mission to help amazing women just like you uplevel yourself and your business because you are meant for more than wiping boogers and folding laundry. I'm also a wife, mother, urban farmer, influencer, green juice enthusiast, and an unapologetic lover of cowboy boots. I can't wait to help you grow your business by sharing my tips, tricks, proven business strategy, experience, and incredible guests. Hang on tight and enjoy the show. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends and educational partners over at Podia. That's P-O-D-I-A dot com. And the cool thing about Podia is that they are a super, super, super user-friendly platform that is basically all-in-one. It takes care of your email marketing, whether you are setting up an automation or you are sending out a one-time newsletter. They take care of hosting a membership site, so you don't have to use social media to host your memberships. They also take care of your digital downloads, so this works perfect for opt-ins and freebies and helping you grow your business and drive your traffic that way. They also take care of hosting your courses where you can put in all of your courses and give access. You can actually also collect payment through Podia. It's amazing. It's so all in one and it's so easy to use and it's so intuitive. The best part is, is they have amazing customer support. Hands down, some of the best customer support I have ever, ever experienced. And I've tried a lot of things out there. The great thing that they've done for us is even though they already have a stellar, super low, affordable, like no-brainer price, uh, their pricing is actually much lower for their highest level. They have two different levels, mover and shaker. That's still more affordable every month than some of these other guys' most affordable programs. So, And you get a lot more stuff. You get the email, you get all of the hosting, you get everything. They also have little templates in there that you can use if you're setting up a basic sales page and they just make it so easy. They make the flow so easy and they've given us a discount. So all of the listeners of today's show, not only are you going to get their already low pricing, but they've also agreed to give you an additional 15% off for life. So regardless of which program that you decide to go with, whether it's the mover or the shaker, you'll get that 15% off. Even if you bounce in between the two, you'll still get that 15% off forever. They also have an introduction where if you use the same code, you can also hop in, take a look around, get your free trial, no credit card required, see if you love it, and I'm sure you will. And then when you do decide, yep, I love it, um, which might be the same day, you can go ahead and get started with your discount, that lifetime discount of 15% and get creating and get your sales and all of your automation started. So I hope that you enjoy Podia as much as I do. Happy creating. Welcome back to another episode, everybody. I have a special guest to you all the way from Singapore. I have uh, Lip Y Chan, and she is the parent whisperer. And I'm just going to turn it right over to you. Tell us about your journey and what that looked like in becoming a parent whisperer. Hi, everyone. I'm La Boy, and thanks for having me here. I'm really honored to be here. I I started out as a home schooler as for my kids, and then I started teaching other students as well. So that's where I see the disconnection between the parents and the children. And I do see like there are some um, different points of views between the children and the parents, what the parents want and what the children want are different. So that's where I started to become uh, who I am now, a parent whisperer, to help parents to understand better of the children mm-hmm. and for their children to understand better of their parents as well. So it's a two-way traffic. Okay. For, for each other to know each other. Because as, as a parent nowadays, we are so busy with our life that, and the main thing that we want for our children is to provide well for them. 
Right. And a lot of times we have already forgotten that our children may want other things rather than what we expect expect them to to be. Agree. Yeah. So it's more of a connecting between the parents and the children for for what I'm doing and to empower parents to understand better of their children. Okay. So tell us a little bit um before we dive into all the juicy details, tell us a little bit about any obstacles that you faced as you started to transition from homeschool mom into Parent Whisper, working with other mom entrepreneurs and the situations that they have sometimes come up in their business. For myself personally, it's not easy to get into the parents, um, in a way, to expect the parents to strip off their ego in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of us have our own ego. And who would say that I don't know about my kids? Who would say that I, I can't control my kids or things like that? So it's not easy to get into the parents' uh, world where we tell them that actually your kids wanted to be something, someone else rather than what you expect them to be. Uh, it takes a it takes a while for parents to realize that, and especially for younger kids who are not very good with expressing themselves. So it's kind of tough to go into their the, the parents, both the parents and the children's mind to to guide them how to really express themselves in a way. Awesome. Yeah, the obstacles that most of the parents, especially entrepreneurs, moms have is how they manage between their family and their work, their business especially. Mm -hmm. And those who are working on their business, you know that it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort on your part. Oh, yes. And having, <laughs> yeah, and having young kids is not easy. Even when they are growing up, the phase, the different phases that we have to go through, it's another it's another roller coaster ride for us. Absolutely. I have um I have a fun little two year old and I have a five and a half year old. So we have um quite the dynamic over here at our house as far as personalities and phases that we're going through. And both of my kids are so different. Um but I you know I know that it was it was really hard for me at first to find that balance and juggle the you know, the work life time and also the, you know, being very present with my kids. And I would tell everybody that I'm basically a nap time warrior. And, you know, but as your business grows, then some of the other things tend to grow too, like the amount of time you need to spend in your business and all of that. And also naps aren't always a predictable time. So you can't necessarily schedule anything during that time and at a, you know, specific set time. So I know that that is a struggle for, you know, a lot, a lot of moms out there and really trying to find that balance. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your suggestions to balancing some of that while kind of trying to combat having like just that overwhelming feeling of mom guilt, like when you're working on your business instead of playing with your kids or vice versa? Okay, this part, a lot of parents were asking. <laughs> yes, it's not easy, especially when you have young kids. And usually when I'm doing my work or what I've taught parents to do is to block up certain timing so that you don't feel guilty after that. Mm -hmm. Block doing your work in small blocks of time where, for example, if you have very young kids that who needs to take nap, I would set a small block of time for them to have their own self-play as well, <clears throat> where they direct themselves. So it's more of a free, unstructured way for them to learn at the same time. So right. while they are learning, you work. So you don't feel that guilt. While they are napping, you work. You don't feel that guilt as well. So which means we have to be very flexible where we can do our work in a small, small little chunks of time and allowing ourselves to have our own personal time to do our work while the kids have their personal time to do their work as well. 
So when it's time for us to bond and connect, that's the time where we drop our things and we focus on the kids and the kids will get to have our full attention as well. Because when the kids have our full attention, they won't expect you to give all your time for them. They won't, they would, they won't ask for your attention in a way because you have already given them. So they won't have um, that kind of like meltdown that often. But of course, it takes time when you want to change to this kind of um, time management concept. Right. Yeah. When you get used to that, both the kids and the mom will know that, <clears throat> okay, this, this is your me time and this is my me time. And when the time is over, okay, this is the time we are together. We bond, we play, we do whatever we want together. Yeah, I love that. Um, I know like the listeners won't be able to see it, but here in my office, I have two tables, like an arts and craft table and then like a little, just a regular table with chairs. And so what we did exactly that is when I was working uh, before my kids were, you know, old enough to go to school or whatever, they would come in and they would say that they were going to work too. And so they would draw and color and do their you know, what they called work while I was doing my work and working on paperwork and on the computer and stuff. And that really, really, really did make a huge difference for our family. Um, because I also figure to, to your point is for me to spend, you know, that hour or whatever, or, you know, now they're like at day camp right now for the summer. So I have, you know, uh, just a couple of hours today where I, it's actually quiet and I can speak to you without screaming in the background because <laughs> we've had podcast episodes with screaming in the background um, more than once. But yes, being flexible is huge, huge, huge. And then having that really like one-on-one -on -one dedicated time after that blocked out time of work time, in my opinion, having like 60 minutes of one-on-one -on -one just really present playtime is way better than having three hours of really not, you know, trying to juggle both, right? Where you're not really paying attention to your business, but you're not really paying attention to your kids. And I know that when you say those words out loud, it sounds awful, but that's basically the reality of it when you're like trying to juggle things on your phone and trying to take a phone call. So you're not able to be a hundred percent present. You're there they see you and they're probably like tugging on you like, mama, 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 come over here, mama, mama. And you're like, no, 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 wait, 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 just a minute. Versus being able to be like, all right, let's go play. Let's go sit down on the floor. We'll color together. We'll play trucks, whatever that looks like. Um, so that was my experience. So um, that's partly why I totally just knew that I had to have you on this show to, you know, today, because I think that this is such a huge thing for so, so many women. That's true. That's true. And a lot of time we were so caught up with our own work that we forgot about this being present mm -hmm. and giving the enough attention to our kids. Right. And being over, overwhelmed with worrying, having a mom guilt, worrying about kids, whether they are, um, whether we are giving enough for them, whether we are, whether they are developing well and things like that. And at the same time, we are also worrying about our work, whether it's, it's progressing well as well. So we are always constantly worrying as a mom, if you realize that. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would say that be present whenever you're there and be present with your work and be present with the kids. So it depends on which time, at you, which time block that you have. And don't worry too much. Of course, we will worry for some but to, we need to be present and we need to be enjoying the moment, that moment now, what you're doing. For example, if you're working, enjoy it. When you're with your kid, enjoy it. So stop worrying about that because once you worry, you spend the time worrying and you don't get to enjoy that moment and you missed it. Yeah, absolutely. And then that just keeps perpetuating more and more guilt. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am um, part of my story, and I think some of the listeners have heard it, but for those who haven't, I'll share it again. Part of my story is I quit my corporate career to be a quote-unquote stay-at-home mom, and 
I had a bit of like an identity crisis over that because, you know, I'd worked really hard to get where I was in my corporate job. And so I decided I knew that I was meant for more than just staying at home and wiping boogers all day and folding laundry. So I decided to start my business back up. And I, you know, I was a business type of mentor in my corporate job. So it made sense to just be a business mentor in my personal job, you know, my personal business. And going into that, I spent the first two years doing that exact thing of like juggling everything and right at first you know little tiny babies they sleep all the time but um once he starts started to become more of a toddler that started to become more of like a situation because they do require so much more attention and rightfully so and they start to make a lot more noise and they you know they just need you with them more often so i actually was like, oh, well, my business is expanding. Maybe I should see about getting some, you know, more regular, like scheduled hours of childcare. And so I sent him to school. I made the decision to send him to school super part time at the minimum amount of time that they would allow me to send him, which was like three partial days. And he absolutely loved it. He loves it. So it's, you know, it's an educational play date really is what it is. And he gets to play with his friends in a learning environment. And so it was win-win. So I have that dedicated time, a few hours a week where it's quiet and I can just focus and I get so, 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 so much more done. And it also gives me a little bit of like time to like do something for myself that actually brings me joy. Like, you know, like I did once before I had kids and that's fun. And it also gives him some time to learn something and be away from me just a little bit. Um, And so the time we have together now is so much better. It's so much more purposeful and we're, you know, we're just able to play and have fun and really just be present. So that's kind of my story. And I feel like a lot of moms probably get into that slump of, holy crap, I have mom guilt. Like I, I must, you know, and this was, For me, I was like, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. How could I put my kid in childcare? So you probably hear things like this all the time. Yeah, I hear it all the time because I'm a stay-at-home mom as well. And I send my kids to school. (laughs) But sending kids to school doesn't mean that we are irresponsible or not taking care of our kids. It's a time where they have their own time and we have our own time to do our things. And like what you say, doing having the time to do what you like, it keeps you sane as well. Yes. And <laughs> to really get your things done. And once you get your things done, you can fully focus with 100% and be present for your kids once they are home. And you don't feel that mom guilt because they are doing that. You know that they are doing their things, their things, and you are doing your own things as well. And both get the job done. Yes. And I think that, you know, for me, and I'm sure with a lot of your clients as well, I think that the thing that holds us back the most is that we worry what other people are going to say, what other people are going to think, whether it's friends or family or, you know, people who we just know um, or extended family or whatever. And we worry that they're going to say something negative, you know, because we're all worried about at least at first, we're all worried about like, oh, they're going to think I'm a bad parent or blah, 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 you know. And then eventually you just get to the point where you're like, all right, I don't want your advice. I don't need your opinion. I'm, you know, my kid's great. And I feel like this for me was a lot of that because I didn't want people to think like, uh, you know, negatively of me. But at the end of the day, you know, who cares, right? That's true. That's true. And a lot of time people like to judge. Yeah. The first look, okay, for example, device. The first look of your child playing on a device, they'll think that, okay, this mom is not taking care of the kids. So she just she just dumped the device for to the kids. Mm-hmm. But they do not know that this kid maybe just this moment have that device on the hand. Right. Yeah. Maybe before that, for my kids, weekdays they do not play unless with permission or they have done their work. And for weekends, I allow them to have control of how they manage their device time, their screen time. 
So they have they are older now, so they have I give them the freedom to control their screen time. So when you're out, maybe people when they see us all on our screen, they may think that okay, this family doesn't really talk. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't really care now because I know my timetable better than anyone else. Right. But of course, I'm still open to what people say so that I can reflect on myself. Am I doing right? I don't really shut off other people, but I don't take, I will filter out certain comments from other people so that I'll take in the good one, reflect on myself and adjust a little and remove those that I feel that it's not, not suitable for me or not right for me. So I'm still open for comments. And I always be aware and intentional on how I parent my kids. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of times the people who are, you know, snickering or passing their judgment or whatever their problem is, you know, with you, they also are probably guilty of doing the exact same things and letting their kids. And so a lot of times I feel like it's a reflection of their own self guilt. Um, but I do remember one time at the shopping mall, I was there and I was getting some jewelry repaired and, um, at the jewelry store. So my two year old was becoming impatient and started to scream like actual screaming, not just fussing. He was screaming. So I put on like this, like, I don't even know what it is, but like an app where he was doing like ABCs and I gave him mm -hmm. the phone with the ABCs on it and some older woman came by and she had a negative comment she's like oh my god he's already on the phone at that age and I was just like whoa like I kind <laughs> of wanted to say something but it like took me off guard and I was like wait you're just walking by and you had something to say like you don't know that he's watching something that's actually educational like yeah it's on a screen but it's also like keeping the peace in the mall, you know? So it was like for five minutes, just a moment in time. And so like you said, it doesn't show that whole big picture, you know? So I see, oftentimes I see parents who give their kids screens like at restaurants, right? And I feel yeah. like that's just, you know, and I think about it like this, like maybe that mom has really just, she's been cooking and cleaning and doing all the things and she just needed a dang break. Like she just didn't want to cook dinner tonight. Maybe it was hot. Maybe she didn't have time to go to the grocery store. Like we don't know what her story is, but she just wanted to have a peaceful dinner that somebody else cooked and she didn't have to wash the dishes and she wanted her kid to be quiet so she could enjoy it. So she let him use her phone or a tablet or whatever. I have no, like, I get it. Like no judgment or anything. I mean, granted, I know some some instances in some families, it's an all the time, every day thing, and it does become problematic and interrupt sleep. And I get all of that. I'm very mindful of that. Um, and, you know, there are days that my kids probably use their devices or, or watch, a you know, one too many cartoon episodes or something, you know, and, yeah. you know, it's just, it, you got to try to find the balance. But yeah, I definitely try not to ever pass judgment on a mom trying to sit at a restaurant, enjoying a quiet meal that she didn't have to cook or <laughs> up after um, while her child is being quiet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I think the device thing is, is the most common judgment that people passed on. And yeah, yeah it, it's kind of, kind of tough not to have kept, kids to have it especially nowadays even in right. the school during their learning time at certain time frame of the uh in the school they do use their device to learn mm -hmm. so yeah. if you use your device purposefully why not yeah just like us adults i mean most adults are on a computer and or cell phone or some sort of device a lot of the day because that is the way that they do their work you know or typing out college papers or whatever that looks like. So there is a benefit to it. So I think that, you know, people go straight to that negative judgment and forget that, oh, maybe that child is learning his ABCs or working on his colors or his numbers or, you know, something actually educational. I don't think that most people just say like, oh, here, watch whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. We don't know what their, their background is. So it's, right. it's not, um, it's not exactly what you see sometimes 
of course, there are parents like what you say, they are always on the, on the device, mm-hmm. but you never know what's happening behind the scene. Right. So I do, I do split up time. Like you, you have your screen time now and later we, you have to be off the screen and work on stuff that are off screen. So we have a balance between that and I make sure that they have um, a lot of nature, mm-hmm. a lot of outdoor for them so that they can really connect with the nature as well and calm their, their mind and calm their soul in a way. And connecting with the nature is really, really calming for the kids and good for our health as well. Yes, we spend a lot of time outside also. And uh, even when they're at their their school, they get to go outside several times a day, um, which I think is wonderful, that fresh air and just being outside and moving their bodies and getting dirty. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And you realize that after after the nature, is like they don't really crave for um, device and things like that mm-hmm. because outdoor, you can't play with it anyway. So yeah. This is, if you find that your kids is, have given, getting addicted to screen in a different way, you can always get them out. Yeah, that's great advice. That's absolutely excellent. Yeah, because once you're outside, there's so many things that kids can do kids of all ages and grown-ups too like you can't walk yeah. around in nature hiking while you're sending text messages because you're going to crash into something so yeah <laughs> even as an adult it's nice to you know set the devices aside and spend those present moments with the kids and in nature and just doing fun things correct yeah so nature is the best way to avoid you know having a screen and for us like what you say we can't even text Right. So we have to be like fully there, be present together with our kids and mm-hmm. stay calm. <laughs> I love that. Um, so what would you say your number one tip for parents would be when they want to start a business? And maybe they're just in the really early phases. What kind of tips do you think that you have that they could really start to take to heart and implement right away? The f- number one tip that I will say is um, time management. Because when you just started, like what you have mentioned, a lot of mom guilt is there. Right. Because you have, especially when you are starting, you have to figure out a lot of things on your own and you are struggling with having to divide your time between your child and your work. So your time management has to really be very well managed of course it takes time for you to learn about yourself as well that's uh-huh. where you discover who you are and what you do for what purpose so with that purpose in mind and with the vision in mind you have a better management of wh- where you want to be and how you want to manage your time such that you get your things done and you get to manage your little little ones at home yeah and and your budget because at times you will want to have some help either on your kids or on your work. So you may get, if you want to automate your stuff, you may need to get some um, software to help you automate yourself or you want a babysitter for that few hours per week. So that's the budget that the budget that you need to manage as well. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, whether you're a stay-at-home parent or not, and you're trying to build a business, I think that people tend to underplay what really goes into growing a business, and it is quite an undertaking. So asking for help a few hours a week with a babysitter, even if you're in your own, like say you have a home office, like I have a home office, and I would get a babysitter um, four hours a week, who would come and, you know, be with the kids, even though I was still here. And it was such a huge help. And so I feel like giving yourself permission to be a, not just a stay at home mom, but to become a work at home mom and to be a business owner, having, once you've like accepted that permission within yourself, it makes such a difference. Yes. Yes, it is. And it's, it's okay to ask for help. So be aware like how much you can manage and don't get overburned. Uh-huh. So when you get burned out, it's very, very quickly you want to, you feel like giving up. Yes. And a lot of, a lot of parents before they start building their business, they think that, okay, I start my home business. I get to 
be at home with my kids and things like that. It's not that easy. And if you don't manage it well, you feel like you have a lot of guilt, guilt on your work not being done mm-hmm. and guilt on, on your kids that you are not there for them. Absolutely. Yeah. And I experienced all of those things. And once I finally decided to give myself permission to do what I needed to do, I was like, oh, this actually isn't so bad. Like, you know, my little one going to the school a few hours a week was so good for him. And it was actually really good for me too, if I'm being honest. (laughs) (laughs) I can totally understand that. (laughs) (laughs) So yes, that's amazing. So I know you have a really awesome free gift for everybody. Um, Let's see, it is the 10 step or 10 non-screen activities that kids can do. Yes, yes, that's the, that's the 10 activities where you can, it's catered for um, starting from toddler or preschoolers all the way to twins, like 10 or 11 years old. Okay. Where, yep, you get, you get, you can interchange the activities as well and you get, you can play with your kids as well where I make it flexible for different ages and you can improve it or you can be creative with the games and activities that uh that is listed there so it you can you tend to take them away from the screen like what i've mentioned with previously and you can bond with your kids with the activities or when you're busy you can arrange those activities for your kids to do while you're working Perfect. I love that. So in order to take advantage of this incredible free gift, just swipe up if you're listening on your phone and grab that straight out of the show notes. We will have the link directly to the 10 non-screen time activities right inside the show notes. Or if you're at amypeterson.com, you can hop over to the podcast page and the link will be available there as well. So one last thing before we hop off of here, tell us where the best places to find you um, are so that we can give you some follows and get to know you a little bit better and keep up with all the great work that you're doing. All right. You can find me um, if you have, you have a reader. Uh, you can find me at my website at parentwhisperer.com. Okay. Yep. And I have a parenting group, which is the Practical Parenting Tribe on Facebook. And a page where I share uh, a lot about our home learning and activities that we do. So I have a three different places where you can find me. The website, lakwanparentwhisperer.com. The parenting group on Facebook. And the Facebook page, which you can find um, on Facebook by typing in Young Smarties. It's mainly about kids. So I have different focus on different platform for parents as well. Oh, that's perfect. Awesome. Well, everybody, make sure that you take full advantage of this incredible, super generous free gift, as well as finding her over on all of the places on social media and hopping into that Parent Whisper group um, where you can get lots and lots of value. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, especially since you're coming to us from tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me here and together with you. I look forward to um, talking with you again soon. Yes, I look forward to. Thank you so much. Thank you.